Good day, dear viewers. Good day, Dr. Lily. We welcome all of you to this episode of Kalusugan Ay Karapatan, Keeping the University Safe and Healthy. Safety covers mental health, gender sensitivity, nutrition, buildings and structures, roads. But for this particular episode, we are going to talk about drug screening program in the universities creating safe and healthy spaces. Good day to all viewers of Kalusuga Nay Karapatan. Yes, Chancellor Menchit. The topic is so interesting since we're both in the academe and at the same time health professionals. Just like our audience, we too are interested to know the provisions of the law and its effects on our students. Dr. Lili, there is one policy that is controversial, and that is the random drug testing mandated of tertiary schools. Many think that this is a problematic measure, but others believe it is beneficial. Where do we stand? Let us hear from our experts and resource persons. Dr. Mengchit, please give me the honor to introduce our resource person because She's a colleague of mine from the Commission on Higher Education, Chad. She serves as officer in charge of the Office of the Executive Director, currently the Director of the Legal and Legislative Service. She chairs and heads various offices, foremost among which is the Task Force on the Strengthening of the Enforcement Powers of the Chad on Non-Compliant Academic Programs and Course Offerings. She obtained her BA in Public Administration from the University of the Philippines and her Bachelor of Laws from the New Era University. She was a faculty member, College of Law and College of Business Education and Administration at the New Era University, where she was a faculty member of the Colleges of Law, Business Education and Administration. As a lawyer, she provided legal counsel the various institutions among these are Haro and Haro Law Office, PDP Laban, Cayetano Legal Team, the City of Imus, Cavite, Securities and Exchange Commission, and the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. I am pleased to present to our viewers my co-worker in government, Attorney Cinderella Filipina Benitez Haro. Our second resource person is a faculty member of UP Diliman and the present Assistant Vice President for Student Affairs of the UP System. He is a social development practitioner and has been part of initiatives to design support programs for students in UP. He was one of the resource persons who formulated the action plan to transform the university into a healthy and nurturing academic organization. He is also a member of the UP Technical Working Group to promote gender equality and gender sensitivity among students. At the national level, he offers technical assistance to the Unified Financial Assistance Tertiary Education or UNIFAST Secretariat in crafting policies on financial and other support programs for undergraduate students. He also assists the Commission on Higher Education on the enhancement of development programs for Filipino faculty members pursuing advanced studies. Dear viewers, let us please welcome to the program Professor Richard Philip Gonzalo. Our last resource person is a lecturer at the College of Law, University of the Philippines. She graduated from the College of Mass Communication also from the University of the Philippines with a bachelor's degree in journalism 
where she was cum laude. She obtained her master's in law from the Queen of Mary University of London, where she specialized in computer and communications law. For more than 17 years now, she has been a partner at the Yorak Sarmiento, Arroyo Chua Coronel, and Reyes Law Office. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Attorney Sandra Olazo Coronel. So may I ask the first question? I'd like to address this now to our resource persons. Um, maybe we can start with the law and looking at the provisions of the uh, law on that mandates the mandatory drug testing. Um, the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002 requires all tertiary schools to conduct a random drug test of their students. Um, this presupposes that there is consent on the part of the parents, um, but the consent is usually given at the time of enrollment. So the university is uh, required to do to put in its handbook uh, the policy on how to conduct this random drug testing of their students. Uh, when you say the consent of the parents, uh, it, can you explain, can you elaborate uh, that part about the, the consent? When, the, when a student enrolls in a particular tertiary um, school, part of the enrollment process uh, requires their consent to mandatory, uh, to random drug testing because the law requires universities to secure this consent. Meaning, uh, if a student or a parent refuses to uh, consent to the random drug testing, then the university has a right to refuse um, enrollment. But that is because um, the testing should be confidential and the testing should be uh, scientific. So the law also provides for the means and the mechanism for the conduct of the drug testing. So, so I want to pose the question now to Attorney Cinderella because uh, since this is mandated uh, on tertiary schools, uh, can you give us a, an idea whether this is being implemented in both private and uh, private and public schools? Yes. So, uh, pursuant to the, uh, to the law which mandates higher education institutions to provide a drug testing among tertiary students, the Commission has issued our CMO or our guidelines on uh, how to conduct drug testing. Um, one of the provisions of that law is that, of course, the higher education institutions should have a random drug testing and they are also not precluded from 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 um, enforcing a mandatory drug testing. So as of now, po, we have issued that uh, last November 2018, and our CMO covers all private and private higher educational institutions. So to answer ma'am your question, all higher educational institutions now are mandated from having their random drug testing. But how many are following or implementing this random test? Oh. Uh, we are, kasi po, we have just issued that last November 2018, but before pa naman po, na-issue namin itong uh, CMO namin, uh, some private higher education institutions are also, are already enforcing that mandatory random drug testing. And some are even uh, uh, enforcing na the mandatory drug testing. But sa mga SUCs po natin, they are in the process now of enforcing the random drug testing. May I know who's funding this, uh, this random testing? So random drug testing, in, uh, in the case of uh, state universities and colleges, it should be the government. And sabi po sa batas, it should be the government which should bear the cost or expenses for the random drug testing if the SUCs or the HCIs are doing this under our CMO. So we are coordinating with the Department of with the Department of Health on how to proceed with the expenses as to the random drug testing. Uh, so do we have a number, more or less, right now? Nang, um, implement yun, nag implement Ay, nag implement po. I think some, oh, sa private HIIs po namin, siguro mga, more the, mga less than 50% pa nag implement ng random drug testing. 
Uh, sa mga SUCs, nasa stage pa lang po sila kasi yun na nga, since meron pang issue as to the expenses, as to the cost of the random drug testing. So, I understand that not all state universities and colleges are enforcing as of, for, for the, as of ano po, uh, this academic year a random drug testing. But uh, we are mandating them that they should have a plan na on how to proceed with the random drug testing. What my, my next question is, how is it being received by the schools and then the parents? Uh, to be transparent, when we issued the, our first CMO, itong mandatory random drug testing, there has, there has been talagang... Um, resistance. <laughs> resistance. Opposition to it. But we have, you know, upon consultation na rin, and with our stakeholders, specifically our private higher education institutions and the students, um naging maganda na ang percep ang ang uh, reception ng aming CMO uh, one because we are following what is mandated by the law and we are also trying to understand the perspective of the students assistant vice president richard nsalo of the university of the philippines up is not directly under chad and therefore, UP has its own understanding of this law. Is this good or bad? What is it for? What do you think so? Well, um, there are reservations when it comes to implementing the um, drug screening for students. For one, it should be very clear how will it, be, how will it um, complement the programs of the university as far as ensuring the safety and welfare of the students. At present, um, it's very difficult to detach the situation of an identified user from the stigma that a student may probably be a drug addict and the connotation and basically the behavior okay, attached to the label of being positive as far as drug abuse is concerned. So, the first thing that um, basically has to be ensured is that we need to come up with a drug screening policy okay, that is consistent with what the university should, what university values uh, should it uphold. So, if we're going to contextualize the program as part of basically um, Understanding what's the landscape or um, what kind of behavior or um, the type of help that students may, um, that can be given to students, then probably um, the program will be well accepted. But right now, um, this has to be uh, formulated and I think changes need to be um, done to ensure First of all, that information about the student will be confidential and if they are to be identified as such, then they are given uh, the protection in sh um, to basically in, um, that they can seek help um, should they need it okay, as a student and basically as a citizen of the country. So, I follow up. Yes, ma'am. Within the University of the Philippines environment, where academic freedom is what we call students assert academic freedom, faculty members assert academic freedom, mm -hmm. how much of this is really helping the students see the importance of this program among the student population? Well, for now, um the university is actually a venue to exercise these values. Okay, so, uh, more or less, you can say that um, the personnel, the staff, the faculty members, and the students are critical of these kinds of policies in the context of the university. That's why if we're going to have uh, to promote this um, mandatory drug screening for SUCs and higher education institutions, it should be contextualized in a larger, bene more benefi uh, beneficial framework okay, that will ensure the health and safety of our students. 
right now, I think um, it's timely to look at this program um, against the um, capacity of our student affairs to handle these cases. Of course, this, is, this has been going on um, for some time, but I think with some information and basically nuancing of the program in the context of ensuring student development, we could basically come up with programs, programs that would be beneficial, especially for those who were identified as uh, positive in the drug screening process. So, is this implemented in the University of the Philippines' eight campuses? I think um, I have to check first if, if it's uh, implemented in all campuses. But again, there are campuses that have reservations when it comes to implementing it. Because of the safety component first has to be ensured. Fear of what? Is there such a feeling of being identified? Is there a stigma attached to this screening? Yes. As definitely. far as the student opinion is concerned? Yes. Um, at least for, uh, for some students, when, the, when we talk about uh, when you are identified as uh, positive, for drug use, there are there's a stigma that probably you may be going through something. You are a problematic uh, s uh, student. You have problems. We have to address that stigma first, because that prevents the student from seeking help, and basically that also endangers the university community because. Um, it opens uh, the community to um, cases that we may not see because the students cannot approach anyone um, whom they, can, they consider as safe okay, for help when it comes to drug dependence. So how do you plan to um, work on this removal of the stigma? I mean, what sort of activities or programs that you have in mind? Um, for now, um, we still do not have um, plans, concrete plans, on how this needs to be addressed. It should be approached from, um, a, um, from a different perspective. It's, you, um, it's often treated as a, um, as a drug problem because um, some of the killings associated with it are associated to um, the drug users. That's the stigma. And we have to deal with that first because not user, not all users are actually going through that. There are occasional users, there are recreational users, but their values are still intact. But some would be seeking help um, to be able to um, address this dependence on these substances. And some are actually doing well and can decide freely on how are they going to deal with this kind of situation? So I think we have to investigate further on, and use probably a different perspective on how this problem, or if, it, if it's really a problem, should be addressed. I want to go back to the comment of Attorney Cinderella because she said that at the beginning there was some resistance yes. and they, you know, they, they're, they're, eventually they followed. I, I think we should learn from how they handled the situation and so that we can modify this uh, yes. for the university. Yeah. There are different approaches to handling this, you know, this uh, drug, uh, supposed drug problem. Some would advocate for drug rehabilitation centers, um, basically have institutions and personnel okay, who can assist those who are highly dependent on these illicit substances. But that only captures those who are um, referred to these institutions and when they go out of the university they no longer have the institutions who will support them. There's another philosophy behind it which is basically um, geared towards harm reduction but it's more on uh, it's more aligned with creating these spaces providing the information so that um, responsible use and basically support can be given for those who seek support uh, from uh, dependents in these illicit substances. So there are ways on how to handle it, but we have to look at uh, what will be the more appropriate way as far as 
uh, implementing it in the university context? Attorney Colonel, my impression is that we have no choice. Um, yes. And uh, are there provisions in the law or the implementing rules and regulations on you know how, they can, how this can be pushed forward? Okay, um, I just want to clarify that the mandatory nature of the drug testing is an imposition on the university and not on the student. Meaning, as far as every student is concerned, um, they cannot be subjected to mandatory. The law does not require that they be mandatorily tested. Because what the law requires is that the university conduct a random drug test. Uh, the law um, being a policy uh, will need to be threshed out in detail and that is left to the university. So, for example, in every university, the law allows the administration to be the one to craft how the policy will be implemented, uh, including providing uh, how exactly random testing is to be done. Uh, there is a scientific uh, manner by which testing can be done. And as academics, I'm sure there is somebody in the university who can craft a, a mechanism to ensure that this is really random. And therefore, the, the results from the testing will be scientifically validatable. The second is, what does uh, the university intend to do with the results? So again, uh, it is left to the university how it can create programs or points of action to address the results of the testing. Um, I, I suppose the resistance is because uh, there was a misconception about the testing being mandatory on every student. Um, the, the law requires the universities to conduct it, but leaves to the university the manner by which it shall be done, including how it will, for, for example, address issues of security, uh, data privacy, um, also where to refer um, those who test positive. Um, because not every university will have uh, a facility, um, a program that is already available. Um, I suppose some bigger university will be able to create their own program, will have the manpower, will have uh, the resources, no? But as mentioned by Attorney Cinderella, not all uh, SUCs will even have the funding for the test itself, no? So that is a basic issue of how the test is to be conducted, but because certainly there is a cost to this testing. Um, and then how to deal with the result is another issue. Um, what will the university do with the result? And on an academic level, um, what is the kind of program that can be developed to address the result? Um, it cannot end in the, in the testing. Yeah. Um, the value of this law should be for us to address, well, first to determine if there is a problem. Uh, is this is this a real problem? I think is the first thing to to determine. Now, because if there's no problem, then 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 this law has no nothing to do. No, uh, there's no basis for it. But if there is a genuine problem, then we need to address. And at what levels? And what are the programs? Uh, if the university, for example, cannot afford to create its own program, is there a government agency or some other agency that can? Uh, address to whom uh, the, the, the solution is uh, solicited because certainly uh, the situation is not university wide only. This is the, you know, the drug is a societal issue and therefore, you know, as mentioned, when they go to their homes, there is a different uh, environment altogether and if we create safe zones in the university, but uh, the government forgets to create, or at, the, uh, at least try to mimic safe zones in their in their homes. Then that's another problem that we are building up to not to be addressed. So, um, what is important is that this law is policy, and um, we have to see how we can flesh this out. 
um, without trampling on the sensitivities of some, the rights claimed by others, because uh, it is there, it, it, you know, uh, we have to deal with this law. Um, I guess every other issue on the implementation is something that we have to sit down on and just work on in detail. No? So, no, you're right, we need the numbers. So I, I want to ask uh, Attorney Cinderella again, um, do we have any baseline numbers on uh, before you implemented this in the, the private and the public schools? Okay. Um, at the onset, I would like to emphasize that um, when we implemented or when we issued our CM or, or the guidelines on the mandatory random drug testing, our overall, overarching policy is, the, is to have a safe safety and health plan of, of, among all universities and colleges. So that is our goal or purpose. And um, the mandatory random drug testing or screening is just one of the measures in order to have that goal. Um, you are asking about the baseline on the numbers of AGIs affected, but it will be very hard to capture it in, in a general sense because not, not all universities have the same problems. They have different problems also as to the drug dependency of the students. So, um, we can say in, a call in general that th this is not just a problem of the university itself, but it is actually a societal problem also because we know that um, drug dependency is a problem in the Philippines also. So, uh, but as I've said, since this is a societal problem, then the universities in the context of education must help in preventing or solving that problem. Attorney Cindy, yes. from the point of view of the Commission on Higher Education, we know very well that there are students who are really dependent on drugs. What brings about this dependency? Is the drug available inside the university campus? Are there students also peddling drugs? Who could be responsible? Is this uh, drug dependency in our universities highly endemic? Is it a problem? Uh, as I've said, uh, the drug problem is different in every, in, in every university. Some universities may just have a problem of drug use. Other universities or colleges may have a problem of drug, well, we have to admit of drug pushing also. So, uh, we have to address this problem because even if, if it's just, if it's, just a small number which is affected, it also affects the whole university. Even if, let's say, if it's just a small number of students who are using drugs in a certain university, it also affects not just the students, not just that student, but also the other students um, in that university. So we, we really have to address that problem or that scenario or situation. Uh, I'd, I'd like to think that this screening is really part of um, one of the measures to, to solve a, a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a drug problem in the country, we all know that, but we're saying now that the, the screening is one measure that we're trying to put in place. Uh, I'd like to believe also that without the numbers, it's going to be difficult mm -hmm. for me to come up with uh, specific programs or, or policies. So, I, I really hope that the data that's generated from this uh, uh, mandated uh, screening will feed into an agency for us to come up with these uh, possible solutions. So, so my question now is that the data that's generated by the participating uh, HEIs and SOOCs, uh, where does the data go? Uh -huh. As I've said, ma'am, um, we, we have only issued our CMO last November 2018. But, but, but where, it, where will it yes, go? Where will um, it it go? will go to the commission. The, the statistics or the numbers, um, it will go to the commission on higher education for us to craft 
or to improve our policy if in case there are some issues that we have to address also that we were not able to address in our uh, guidelines. So um, all the all statistics of the universities will eventually, as a regulatory body, will go to the Commission on Higher Education and then we will have a general uh, repository of such data or information and then we will try to analyze the same to determine on how to improve our policy also. And do we have a timeline for, for this uh, uh, implementation and probably um, coming up with the data? Come 2000, year 2020, all universities should have a consultation on a uh, drug policy or drug policy of uh, each university. So uh, by the next year, by next academic year, of uh, specifically February 2020, all universities should have a consultation on uh, the drug policies that they should have. Okay. I, I just happened to attend a, um, uh, an event yesterday that specifically addressed actually the, uh, uh, it was actually a launch on a drug research laboratory and there were two points that were raised, you know, uh, one document saying that we have about 1.8 million users, then there was another document saying that we have about, at one point in their life, they used it. Uh, about another about four million. So I just want to emphasize the, po the point that uh, it's really a spectrum because I think you know there are really some who are just maybe a single user, and then there are some who may be drug dependent, and then eventually labeled this a and, and then you have the drug pusher. Mm -hmm. So if I if I look at the whole situation now, we are now looking at uh, the Commission Higher Education, probably the Department of Education, to take a look at uh, programs that will actually capture uh, these concerns because I, I totally agree, you know, yesterday we were discussing this and we were saying that getting them, getting them at college may be too late. So I, we actually look forward to this data that will be generated by, by the CMO that was issued by Chet because I am looking for a, a safer 2021 for, for the students. So, so now I'm going to throw the question now to EVP Richard, yes. because it seems like uh, by 2020, we will be expected to come up with our own program also in the university. Yes. Are we ready for that? Well, for now, um, um, we will be doing certain initiatives on how to um, go about this um, drug issue, drug, drug problem. But again, um, our main concern first, we, un we understand that data is actually important to inform uh, the development of the program. The first concern was actually, if we gather data, um, how do we ensure that the identity of the students, the confidentiality will be ensured? That's the major concern because um, there are um, basically labels attached if you are um, identified as a drug user. So that's the first thing that we need to uh, contend with. And then second is actually when we gather this data, probably it has to be clear on the part of the university what will be the um, policy or the approach in developing the um, drug program for those identified as drug users. As I said a while ago, there are different approaches to it. You can either have a center within the university or basically try to come up with policies and programs that can influence the um, social conditions surrounding the drug use. So that has to be settled so that um, the gathering of the screening of uh, students will be, uh, let's just say, um, safer and can provide us with the data that can be used in order to formulate and firm up all of these programs. I would understand um, Chad would be using this, uh, this data. Okay, I'm interested in, the, in our data in the university, so I really want to really put you on the spot now yes. and uh, you know, share with the viewers because they would like to know what will be the framework or the timeline for the implementation of, uh, of, uh, the, implement of the adoption mm -hmm. of this law. Okay, so as far as the numbers are concerned, it's very difficult to come up with the numbers. Anecdotal data, however, um, we can come up with um, accounts on what drug use is, uh, the present generation. No, but the question is now, 
what will be your timeline, what will be our timeline for the adoption of this law? Um, um, probably give us a, about give or take one or two years because we need that data. One or one, we need that data first. But it's a chicken and egg. Yes, it's a chicken and egg issue. If you don't do issue. your random, uh, uh, random testing, yes. you will never get the data. Yes. Sir. So I mean, really, if you look at what they what Chad is actually yes, telling sir. us, you've got to implement this so that we can get the initial data that will actually go on to the next set yes, of programs. Sir. So we have to settle for uh, we settle which uh, which philosophy are we going to um, basically promote in the drug program of the university first because these are two contending contending issues both are actually there are accounts on how are these being implemented outside and those uh, there are um, consequences of promoting this uh, these kinds of philosophy so that's something that needs to be settled okay, among the student affairs personnel and even to the colleges and so basically the first year would likely be to understand what are we going to, what values or what approach are we going to promote before we can come up with a drug screening program. Because we're talking about lives of students. Once we screen the students, again, they will be exposing themselves okay, to the possible risk of being tagged as a drug addict, a drug user, or a drug pusher. So uh, safety is the first concern before we can even um, finalize the drug screening program. I want to pass on this question to Attorney Coronel because uh, um, I, I, I understand exactly where you're coming from, but now that I'm understanding also the law, I want to make sure that we are abiding by the law. So can you guide us on how the university can proceed? Well, um, you know, I just need to, to underscore the fact that the random drug test only gives a result of drug use, okay? It does not give you the range of, is this a one-time user or a, re a, a repeat user or a drug addict? What is the extent of the addiction? It's just a use. So what it actually measures or should measure is the penetration, random, at this point in time in the university, this is the penetration of use. So uh, maybe that is a first step to disabuse the minds of our students and our community that the test itself is uh, a condemnation that they are a drug user or anything, no? Um, because uh, this just provides us a, da uh, a baseline of use. Um, how we will use this data? Um, will be dependent on a program that the university itself will craft. So, uh, to even cross over from user to what is the extent, is this an addiction, is this, uh, is something that the university has free reign to administer. At the same time, if it does not even go in the first step of knowing if there is a problem, is a challenge. Because then we will never be able to take the second step of, okay, so if we have a penetration rate of this much, then what are the programs that we need to build? On the issue of confidentiality, I think that is the challenge to the university because the confidentiality of the process is entirely within the, within the control of the university. You are the ones who will come up with a program of how to make a random test how randomness is to be measured, um, who are the students who will be covered by this random test, and who will have access to the data. Um, you know, even what is the information that will be required of the student, you know, at the time, if this student is asked to be covered by the random test, uh, it is up to the university to require, the, you, will you require a name, a student number, or just gender, or just, a random I am specimen number two, I am specimen number three, meaning uh, that wide range of anonymity that can be placed on the test results is all within the control of the university. And I think um, from the learnings of, um, you know, the resistance is there, but eventually we will have to admit that we will never be able to resolve a problem unless we know that it's there. 
and, uh, it, and this is what the what the law is asking us to do to take a first step to determine so that we know exactly how to address because as i said uh, the test does not cover um, anything beyond use so you can test positive because you used once you can test positive because you're an addict you can test positive but note again that uh, those who are peddlers but not users will not test positive so that is still another issue that needs to be looked at by by the school so attorney cindy and uh, attorney coronel and abp richard given the law the law is the law uh, the state has certain obligation to the Filipinos, everyone, everyone, uh, and uh, if health is a matter of right, that is the overall thinking of the government on how to protect the students and others. Considering that the uh, student is found positive, the student could be a risk inside the university, and I think that is where the university is coming from, is also to protect those who are mingling with our students who are pound positive so what would be the basic requisites to make sure that the if i'm a parent i like to be assured that my child my daughter my son entering the university of the philippines or any tertiary education the university is a safe environment what would be needed to make sure that drug testing is really in place and it is very useful. Okay, so um, for the University of the Philippines, again, I have to cite the, that the university has uh, can develop the drug program okay, and basically influence the screening process because um, we can identify who are actually the users but the circumstances surrounding, okay, um, the social circumstances surrounding the user has to be identified as well because the program has to address the circumstances and not just the, uh, the, the drug use. So in order to address the problem, again, that has to be ensured. From this data that we're going to gather now, um, at least the university is implementing, it has its um, data privacy um, policies in place okay, to ensure that should a student um, submit to the um, screening program, um, they will be protected. Confidentiality will be ensured for these students. But for uh, when they, they also test positive, again, there will be in additional information that will be obtained from the students that will now be dependent or contingent on what philosophy will be promoted okay, by, uh, by the university as a drug program. For now, that drug program has to be finalized first because um, we, uh, th that will influence the amount of data or the type of data that will be gathered during the drug screening process. It's very important because uh, we have to deal with this as a um, human development, uh, social development issue as well. Okay? It's not just about drug use, but it has something to do with the choices or the circumstances that may be, be that um, doesn't only concern the university, but basically the household or the community where the student resides in. So it's very important to... Uh, so data privacy policy programs should be developed first, okay? But the amount of information will have to be determined, okay? By the kind of program that we would like to establish. Yes. I think we have substantially covered the various issues and angles of this mandatory drug testing in school. May we now ask our resource persons to give their final words to our viewers, to our viewers, attorney? Um, well, as far as I'm, I am concerned, um, I would like to think that there is wisdom in, in this policy. Um, yes, the risks are high, um, but what I see in the law is that it has taken some safety measures also into consideration and uh, I am more afraid of 
um, us not recognizing that there is a problem than us saying, uh, well, it will be problematic to implement. Um, I am I am so happy that there are at least 50% of the tertiary universities who have tried to implement. And I'd like to learn from, from the results because, you know, um, Congress will need this input to see if the comprehensive drug uh, law addresses our issues. Um, all our state policies will all have to be catered based on information. And if, if we do not have the information, then this is what's happening. You know, we will have policemen barging into the homes because they don't know what information is real and what information is just given to them. So if we provide them with statistics, with genuine information based on, on facts, based on scientific surveys, then we, you know, we will probably be able to cater to a better uh, policy. We will have a better program in the implementation on a national scale. And I guess it's, it's, it's something that we need to, to help government do because the government needs the input. Otherwise, as I said, uh, the solution is a police state. That, that's the solution because the government doesn't know how to deal with the drug problem. And so it will call on the military and the police to solve what is not probably a problem that is, uh, that is lawlessness, no? This is, if this is a genuine societal problem, it's a medical problem, whatever this problem is, we need to find a real solution. And I think this is a first step. And it's important for us to recognize yes. that there's a problem. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, attorney. So, we understand that... Professor Richard? Yes. Uh, we understand that drug screening is a first step to gather the information about um, our drug uh, problem and the magnitude of the use and dependence on um, illicit drugs. Um, from the student affairs point of view, okay, we have to frame this drug screening process as part of a more uh, bigger or comprehensive program. Okay? We are not just ensuring the safety of the community, the university community, okay? but in implementing the programs, we would also like to ensure the safety of the individual going through the process. Okay? So it's paramount to ensure not only uh, the general safety and wellness, okay, but also the individual uh, well-being, safety, and basically the rights of the student going through the process. That's why we're very critical okay, of certain screening process. But we recognize that this is a step to understand better. It's an opportunity to make sense of what the drug problem is in the university, in society, that's why we have to take these measures in a manner that also ensures the safety and health of the individuals going through the process. So, that's very well said. That's uh, ensuring that the student is also safe from harm, the identified student, and those people around the students. That well said. Attorney Cinderella. Um, goals shared are one, prevention, and second, ensuring that there are programs or measures undertaken by higher educational institutions to, um, uh, for those who are identified or for those who are tested as positive. Having said that, we have laid down several steps, several programs or measures to do this. Uh, we will be collaborating with the DBB, Dangerous Drugs Board, in order to have, in order to assess our higher education institutions to have a health plan of its own. Mm -hmm. And we are also mandating our higher educational institutions to have a drug-free committee so that they will be able to improve our policy, our system, to um, somehow um, have a system of their own on how to, to follow our CMO and our law. Oh, um, with one goal or with one overarching policy, which is to have a safe and healthy 
universities and colleges. We are grateful to all our resource speakers for sharing their ideas. Thank you, Attorney Cinderella, Attorney Coronel, uh, AVP Richard, uh, for sharing this afternoon with all of us. Health is a matter of right. It is the obligation of the university to keep every student and every member of the community safe from harm. To our viewers, thank you for watching. And please watch more episodes of KK, Kalusugan ay Karapatan, Mabuhay ang Kalusugan ay Karapatan. Thank you.